Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a first year medical resident. It's been a while since I've done a Q&A, so today I'm going to be answering your questions about the ICU and a couple of other questions. But first, I want to update you on my week. So Wednesday, I had my first ever TV interview. Like, it's crazy. I never expected something like that to happen. So here's a clip. It's a pleasure to meet you. Where did the idea come from? Graduating from med school and realizing that I was starting this daunting, kind of scary journey as just becoming a doctor, yeah. I wanted some way to, to document it. So thank you so much to Cable14 for having me on the show. And if you want to see the whole thing, look at the comments below and I'll leave a link down there. So let's get down to some questions. So Amanda's asking, has anyone ever seen you vlogging in the hallways? The answer is yes, <laughs> and um, still super embarrassing to me. It's a little bit easier now that some people know that I, I do this vlog and so they know what's going on. Actually, in my last video when I was chatting with nurses about what doctors do that annoy them, um, we went into an empty patient room, closed the curtain, and then partway through when we were chatting, my ICU fellow like barged into the room and was like, oh no, is there a new patient? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was pretty embarrassing because then he thought we were just taking selfies and uh, yeah. <laughs> so Cherry Blossom wants to know, um, how is your mental physical routine adapted to function on less sleep than others? Um, I don't know if it has to be honest, I'm not sure if it's adapted or maybe it's just situation dependent. Automatically you're just more awake because you're doing something. But I mean last night around five in the morning when I was writing a note and I was going along and I kind of got that head bob. You know that feeling and then it kind of, you know that you just fell asleep or you're just about to and your eyes feel like they're getting kind of blurry when you're trying to keep them open. So that still happens to me, but I guarantee you if my pager had gone off at that moment, there'd kind of be like a shot of adrenaline and I'd be wide awake again. So I, yeah, I think you just do what you need to do and anyone would be able to manage if, uh, if they were faced with it. All right, next. So Sarah is asking, what if you get done with this rotation and want to switch from internal medicine to ICU? So you guys can probably tell that I've been really enjoying these last two months in ICU. Um, the good thing is that ICU is actually a subspecialty of internal medicine. So if I really like it, I can go into ICU. So uh, Abigail wants to know, how tall are you? So I guess I looked um, pretty tall in my last video compared to people I was chatting with. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. I'm 5'7", so I don't know, average, tall? You tell me, it probably depends where you live. Maybe I'm short in the Netherlands. So Olivia wants to know, how long do people usually stay in the ICU? So that's a tough question. I have some people who just stay overnight. We need to help them with their blood pressure quickly and then they can leave the next day. But then there are also some people who are there for months and those are often people who have really chronic diseases where they have to be on a ventilator and sometimes in the city it's hard to find a, a place where someone can be taken care of on a ventilator for a long time. So then they end up in the ICU. Often you find these people have their rooms covered in pictures and everyone knows them really well. Um, it's a bit sad to see sometimes but I think people make the best of it. Okay, so Taylor wants to know what's the most interesting thing you've seen in the ICU and what's the hardest thing you've seen? So most interesting thing? Mm, there, there are a lot of interesting medical cases, but I think at the end of the day what sticks with you is how the ICU team works together and how people come together in a time of complete crisis and, and work together to save someone's life. That is incredible. Hardest thing? Well, I'm actually at a hospital right now where we deal with a lot of cancer patients. So unfortunately, we don't actually see the success stories. We don't see when things are going well. We see the patients where they have complications that no one wanted to happen. And so we're seeing patients where their organs are shutting down when infection has taken over their entire body. Um, and they're often young. Like we've had, um, you know, deaths with patients in their 20s, 30s, 40s that just, ah, uh, it just feels, it sucks. So Yair wanted to know, uh, did you do the ultrasound part or did an ultrasound tech do it? So I think in this question, it's asking um, about procedures that we do. So if I'm putting um, a, a needle in someone's neck, I'm gonna look with the ultrasound and then poke in so I see where I'm going. That I'll do myself. But say I wanted to know if someone had an inflamed gallbladder. Well, I'm not really trained to do that. So I would send um, that 
to be done formally by radiology and by an ultrasound tech. But learning more and more about doing ultrasound and helping that to sort of enhance your physical exam and learn about the patient, that's definitely the way of the future and we um, are expected to know more and more now. I'm just waiting for the day when I can have like a little ultrasound that fits my purse, that I can take out and look at someone's heart or lungs, kind of like a stethoscope of the future. But uh, yeah, if anyone's developing that, let me know. Okay, so now I've got a question for you guys. What do you think is the best way for me to answer your questions and to be able to stay connected to you? I was thinking about trying to answer questions over my Instagram story, um, but it's only up for 24 hours. How do you think that would work? I can still do some Q&A videos, but then I can answer more questions more regularly. You don't have to wait for weeks. So let me know or if you have any other suggestions because I love hearing from you guys and this is a huge part of the reason that I'm doing YouTube is to actually connect with you. So yeah, anyway, I will be chatting with you guys next week. So bye for now.